Hey, hey, Caribouni, Nairobi. Caribouni Eastlands. We're taking a little ride today from Mbakasi to Umoja. Now, one thing for me, whenever I walk through a community or, or ride through a community, I'm really intrigued about like the life that came before the life I'm seeing now. So I'm always just digging into these historical facts and um, local statistics about the area. It just gives me a little bit more vision and understanding about the place that I'm moving. So for starters, this Imbakasi is huge. It's very, very big. Um, it is a division of Nairobi. When uh, obviously Nairobi is the capital of Kenya. The area of Imbakasi is located southeast of the Central Business District, or uh, as we call it for short, we say CBD. And in America, we would just say downtown. We often say town here in Kenya. Um, they say that a lot of Kenyan celebrities actually live in this Imbakasi area because there's some, I guess you could call them affluent estates affluent uh, just like i said in the last emoji video it's it's relative to your perception but there's definitely some nice new and modern housing available on this side of the city so regardless of say the eastland stereotypes it doesn't necessarily fit the reality of the lifestyle that people may be living over on these sides so this is one of the most fast developing areas within Kenya and within Nairobi. It's home to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, uh, which is the main airport for the country of Kenya. Interestingly enough, I learned that originally Jomo Kenyatta Airport was actually called Mbakasi Airport. It was opened in 1958 during colonialism. Uh, it actually has some dark history uh, in regards to the development. And then later on, it was ultimately changed in 1978 to be what we currently know it as JKIA, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. So this Mbakasi, it consists of a lot of different areas. Uh, there's different names for the hoods and then these estates within the hoods. So. You have places like Dandora, Kariobangi South, Kayoli, uh, Mukuru, Njiru, Ruai, Umoja, Ten Estates, Donholm, Soweto. Vast, vast area. There's just so much life happening here and just a ton of history. So just for perspective, Nairobi is home to around 4.5 million people. Of course, these are all rough statistics. There's high birth rates, there's babies being born every day. There's um, other Africans from other countries coming into Kenya every day. There's Europeans and Asians and Middle Eastern people coming into Kenya every day. So this population is always fluctuating and always changing. Just in the last 10 years, the population in, in uh, Nairobi has exploded by about 40 percent so it's an insanely growing city and it's had that same upward trend ever since colonization ended and kenya became independent in 1963. at the time during colonialism there were less than 400,000 people in this nairobi and there's so much history that we need to cover about that there's not even enough time for this video but once colonization ended, the local Kenyan, they were free to move into the city to seek work. And just like, same thing in America, people leave big towns or small towns or country areas and go to the city all the time and every day looking for work. It's just kind of the old story of, of populations shifting and moving as developments happen. So, Nairobi accounts for roughly 10% of Kenya's total population, and Mbakasi makes up a huge, huge section of that. So this Mbakasi area actually has a, around a million people living throughout it. The next closest section of Kenya, sorry, Nairobi, Kenya, 
would be an area called Kasarani. And we'll definitely be vlogging in Kasarani at some point. I've been around there a bit, so it's kind of nostalgic for me whenever I go around there. So at this point, we've learned, you know, if, if Nairobi has, say, four and a half million people and one million of those people are within this Mbakasi, it's certainly a bustling area and very, very full of people, very, very full of action. And another fun fact is it makes up essentially a, a third, one third of Nairobi's industrial zone. So if you're ever going to take the train in Nairobi, you're going to board the train in Mbakasi. If, if you're gonna be involved in some industry that involves freight, it's gonna come through Mbakasi. Um, industries are really happening there. They've been happening there for a long, long time. It's continued to grow, but it's also gone to a point of becoming a bit crowded. So some things have also shifted to other sides. Of course, we already talked about JKIA. It happens to be East Africa's busiest airport. And even when it was first developed, it was one of few airports in the world at that time that still had space to expand the runway. So it kind of gave a bit of bragging rights to the region. And it really opened up Kenya to be this, this, this African power nation with its, its accessibility to international trade and international travel and and of course the the very well-known tourism industry that's also happening here within kenya so within Mbakasi, you're going to find everything uh, even shopping malls there's a, a gateway mall um, some other malls uh, we'll mention later in kaoli there's a new one in southfield shopping mall which we'll be passing by here in just a moment and ironically, when I first came to Kenya in 2018, Southfield Mall was this small little mall that was pretty new. There was no Nivus next to it, uh, but nowadays you're about to see the Nivus too. Things have just really changed. So right here is City Cabanas and Maradema, two different sections, uh, but Amara sits behind the City Cabanas. Um, I wasn't able to find uh, much information on Amara, but... Uh, it was started uh, way back in the day. It's a very functional, uh, family-oriented neighborhood. It was um, born after the British American tobacco uh, industry constructed it many, many years ago, and it continues to be a place for a lot of families and about 150,000 residents. So it looks like we just passed Southfield Mall. We just passed the new Nivus, and. Um, I stayed in this area also my first time in Kenya 2018 once again and very interesting time <laughs> whenever it rains it floods uh, in that particular section where we just saw the Caribbean food courts but it really gave me just a taste of the slice of life of someone living within Nairobi that has a little bit of money but not a lot of money you know so it was a very eye-opening experience um, having the opportunity to stay there. So we've been cruising here on Airport Road North for a few minutes now, and we're going to continue. Um, so whenever we made that loop on the overpass bridge at Cabanas, um, it changed our direction. We're in a more northward direction now. So let's say you were coming from coast from uh, Mombasa Road and you needed to get um, up country past Nairobi. This would be a road that you could take to bypass going through CBD and the hectic nature of all that traffic that you would encounter. So with that said, this is also considered the Eastern Bypass. So we're just cruising along, cruising along. You're gonna see, um, a coca-cola distribution factory coming up here pretty soon coca-cola is all over the place in kenya um i think pepsi used to be if i'm not mistaken but it really seems like a coca-cola takeover so we have a little bit of time here on this airport road before we reach our next junction i just want to run back a little bit uh, where we first started on that mombasa road 
just so you know Mombasa Road is also Mombasa Highway and if you can guess it goes to Mombasa it's a notorious notorious highway um, very hectic and it really runs so much industry if it's not goods coming on the train lines from Mombasa where the port is the biggest port in East Africa then it would be coming on a lorry truck or as we say in the US a semi truck or a big truck it would be coming down Mombasa Highway Mombasa Road so Mombasa Road is also where the Nairobi Westlands Expressway is being built which is really quite groundbreaking uh, for Nairobi um, it's a point of controversy amongst a lot of citizens because it's a toll highway but as far as development i really have to appreciate it um, you know it's akin to what you see in other major american cities it's an elevated road above the main road and it, it's really going to lighten the load um, for the heavy heavy traffic that comes through i think it should also enhance safety measures for um, pedestrians or uh, street level um, cars and motorbikes that are that are using those resident residential sides as they move along so that Mombasa Road is just notorious um, if you ever get a chance you know you can definitely take transport all the way to Mombasa on that highway it passes through Savo um, you get a chance to see some animals and all that so it's another one of those things that really intrigues me how you can be on a road in one place and then you can find yourself on that same road in a whole other place and it looks completely different. It's completely different things happening, but it's the same road. It's just really interesting to me and that's something that I peeped a lot traveling in the US because I could find myself on a highway five states away from where I had originally seen that highway or driven on that highway. So the, the roads are extensive, you know. Um, there's a lot of fun facts about these highways in Africa and um, they're super connected, not all, but some of them. And there's one in particular that runs through Nairobi that we'll do a vlog on a separate time, but it literally connects South Africa to Egypt and it comes through Nairobi and it's a notorious highway also that's very modern and one of the newest ones also. So now we've reached Baraka Road. My first time on this road was I think 2019. I came to visit a friend and at the time this entire road was dust. It was under construction. So it's really nice to see that it's been finished. They got a good clean sidewalk running down both sides for the pedestrians. Right here we got a little turn off point so that you can get out of the way of the traffic. That's very convenient and safe and good. They even have the curbs there alongside which um, definitely helps for safety again for the pedestrians and it uh, definitely helps with crowd control because as you move around in Kenya and let's just say Nairobi you will learn that the motorbikes, the, the boda bodas, they will definitely jump on that sidewalk and, and ride, al ride alongside the, the pedestrians. But it can be a safety issue, you know. So it's good to see that they had the mind to put up those curves to try to generate um, some kind of uh, extra level of safety for the people walking along. So we're coming up on an area. We're not going to go through it, but I've been through a little bit of it before. It's uh, what you would call an informal settlement, or as the mainstream loves to call it, a slum. I never knew that they would uh, call it an informal settlement. It's a more politically correct word, and it's also accurate more so when you look at the history um, and we can't go all the way into the history, but the reality is during colonization, the African was not able to live within Nairobi, certain sections, and the sections they were allowed to live in, they essentially built these informal settlements. These were like laborer neighborhoods, and some of them have just simply continued to grow. It's a big point of controversy politically to this day. Um, because there's a lot of issues that happen in those communities. 
So the governments have tried to do some things to, um, how do I say, reduce further development of these less developed uh, housing establishments and whatnot. But uh, just something else about this uh, Soweto. It's almost 100,000 people living there. And from the research I did, um, it's said, even by the locals, not just from what I read, that there's more illicit liquor there than there is maji, than there is water. In these communities, they may be completely without running water uh, and, and other basic services, so people are actually paying for water to be dropped off to their residents. And it just really creates a, a rough situation for people. Um, I would love to vlog from some of those sides at some point. There's definitely a safety factor involved. If I am gonna do it, maybe I'll do it one day, like this video, doing it from an Uber, just for the sake of safety. Otherwise, I would probably need to hire some security if I was gonna be walking along and, and trying to film. So this Soweto is just straight ahead and then it kind of breaks off to the right into the official community. I've been straight ahead before. However, on this day is the day that I learned there is a shortcut where you can avoid going through that neighborhood um, the way I had before. And I've been through that edge of the neighborhood in a car and also on a motorbike. And I definitely know that people were surprised to see me rolling through as a foreign white guy. So we're about to bust a left up here, right here where the cyclists are going. They're going the same way because they know the shortcut. So here we go to this unpaved road. I also couldn't find a name for this road. Um, they might have just made this road. I'm not sure about that. Somebody can come to the comments and let me know if you know more about that. So this is going to cut straight across and we're going to go over to Kaoli Spine Road, which is a road that will lead us to Kaoli, Donho, Umoja. You can also reach Buburu on this route. You can reach Outer Ring Road just before Buburu. So we're going to cruise along here in Kodoga before reaching this Kaoli Spine Road. I think we can go ahead and talk about Kaoli just a little bit while we're cruising that direction. Kaoli is notorious, notorious. It's a super popular and super populous um, area. Uh, of Nairobi, it, it's full of estates. Uh, it's very crowded. Uh, nowadays, it has tall apartment buildings within it. We're not actually gonna see it, but it's along the route, so we gotta talk about it. Um, it's, it's known for some bad things, to be honest, but it's known for good things too. Unfortunately, the bad often outweighs the good. It's known very much for crime. Uh, including kidnapping, organized street gangs, such events. So it's not a place to be taken lightly. I have been there a couple times, but nothing major. I walked there once in 2019, and then I visited around the fringes of Kaoli and Kaoli Junction um, just back in 2021. However, Regardless of the bad things that it's known for, it's also known for thriving business. The businesses are, are very packed in and things are really moving, things are happening. And then in recent years, some of the mainstream Kenyan banks have moved into the area. And there's also an area school that apparently is known for producing some of the top, top students in Kenya. And just as well, there's a brand new shopping mall right along the edge of Kaoli as well. So. Uh, you would go straight ahead on this road and whenever we reach the roundabout, you would take a right and you would be reaching into the famous Kaoli. So here to the left is an area called Don Home. Oh, by the way, Kaoli has about 500,000 people living there. Very full. 
So Don Holm has um, a fairly well-known mall called Greenspan Mall. I've been to Greenspan uh, about five or six times. It's definitely nice, very, very nice. Um, it's a very lively, good place to take the family. Um, whatever it is you want to do, take a date, go out to eat, do your shopping. And then not only that, but it's surrounded by nice apartment buildings and bustling business area so this dawn home we're going to talk about it just a bit because my mind got blown when i started reading about dawn home so it's an eastland suburb obviously and interestingly enough the name dawn home was given by the colonial developer that had started dairy farming in that area now if you watch my emoji video you will know that these sides were once Shamba land. They were once farmland. So before all these apartments and all these people, these areas were agricultural regions. Once again, it's the same story about population shifting. And even in America, in, a, in an American city, you might go to a suburb that 10 years ago used to be a, an empty farm, you know, a vast field of wheat. And, and, and tractors so it's just amazing to think about how things change over time so this guy this guy that named this Don home he developed a lot of Nairobi apparently he was into architecture um, he, he developed a lot of housing he developed buildings he even touched Kampala which is in Uganda there's a major church there in Kampala and uh, it's over a hundred years old at this point. Um, he was involved in developing Jogu Road. So this guy just really had his hands in so many things in regards to development, uh, from planting palm trees all over Nairobi and, and all this architecture. But it came to a point where he started farming, and that's where the Don Home Shamba came from. So here we are at the junction. Kaoli to the right, Don Home to the left, Umoja to the right now that we've turned. So Umoja takes on this entire stretch all the way to Outer Ring Road and to the left, Don Home takes on the whole stretch on the way to Outer Ring Road. So I keep saying this guy, we're just going to leave it like that <laughs> instead of naming the, the, the colonist. But whenever he started doing the farming, he needed a way to transport the milk and whatever other goods were coming from the, the Shamba to town, right? So he actually played a big role in developing Jogu Road, which is a very popular Matatu route. Um, if you're on these sides, you'll likely find yourself on a Matatu going to town. And that is the road you're going to take. So uh, I was just very shocked to learn um such detail i was already shocked in the beginning to learn about the shamba history of this side and obviously if you think about it it should be obvious every city wasn't always big and it would have been surrounded by farms but just to hear it and to envision that is just very profound because as you see there's just so much happening now so this guy played a big role and don't get me wrong uh, by by no means am i trying to praise this guy because while he was doing these things he was also keeping africans out of the area because that's how the colonial era was really working but at the same time it's very interesting to know how these places came to be where this road came from what did this area once look like compared to what it looks like now? And as you see, there's some tall apartment buildings here. We got balconies. You know, you can only imagine when you go to the top of that building, the kind of view you get of, of the hood around you. It's just really amazing. So we're just cruising down this Manyanja Road now, Karabuni Manyanja Road. We got Kaoli in the rear view mirror. Donnie on the left. Umo on the right and Matatu, Matatu. You're gonna see so many Matatus on this road, just so much action. It's a very busy, busy road from day to day to day. Uh, typical Nairobi lifestyle. And it's walkable. You can walk the whole way. There's supermarkets along the route. 
so much housing. And just something uh, to mention about even the Sumoja and the information I'm getting for this narration. A lot of these articles are outdated. I, I really struggle to to find um, up to date information, even up to date populations on these areas. So I think I mentioned it a bit in the Umoja video about the overcrowding issues because so much housing started coming in and uh, it created some water issues, some sewerage issues and whatnot. But just take it from me firsthand. I just walked through a section of Umoja earlier today and there's three brand new, very tall buildings going up. And in Kenya, I believe it must be law. I'm not sure if it's a law or what. But if a building is over five floors high, it must have a lift. Or as we would say in the West, an elevator. And one of the buildings that we passed by today was nine floors. We stopped and we counted the floors and said, okay, this one must have a lift. So now we are entering into Umoja Inner Core and Tena Estates. So Tena Estates is basically a narrow strip of a gated community that separates Umoja from Manyanja Road. And then once you cross Manyanja Road, you are in Don Home. So it's not a bad area. Is it polished? No. Is it beautiful and lively? Yes. Um, and again, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It's definitely local living. Some people call it ghetto, I call it middle class. It's definitely a working class community and uh, it's bustling, you know. So some of these articles might say that people are fleeing Umoja by the droves, but that doesn't quite match up whenever you walk through the hood and you see all the construction always happening. So people are continuing to come in and unfortunately I can't get a population number on this Umoja. I could not find one, but I may have seen something somewhere that suggested it's around 300,000 people. And just for perspective, my hometown is 6,000 people. So, Karibuni Umoja, we have arrived. Peace and love, Kenya. We'll see you next time.